the next one simultaneous equations simultaneous equations has two unknowns and you will have to uh, solve both of them for example you will have to get the answer for the x as well as for the y this case for the c as well as for the d I'm only going to do one of them uh, Okay, in the first place, there are three methods to solve it. You can solve this by elimination, by substitution, or by drawing a graph. But I'm going to use elimination. Elimination means you cancel, you get rid of one of them. If you look at 2x plus 9y, Two x plus nine y and three x minus nine y. I want to. Sorry, this one doesn't have the equations there. I just, um, I just have to look. I'm so sorry to look at this one. Okay, it's yeah. This one, it's an example from the presentation. They should be equals 7 and equals 3. Equals 7 and equal 3. Now I want to get rid of one of them. If I have 9 sweets and I eat 9, I have no more sweets. So I'm going to cancel it. I will add this 9 minus 9 is nothing. So I'm going to eliminate the, uh, the y. So 2 plus 3 gives me 5x. 7 plus 3 gives me 10. Just like we did with the equations, I have to get x on its own, divide by 5 so that I can cancel. What I do on this side, I do on that, this side. So x is equal to 2. So the x is 2. Now I have the value of x. And now I take one of them. So if for instance I take 2x plus 9y is 7. And because I have the value of x, I'm going to substitute the x by 2. So it will be 2 times 2 plus 9y is 7. 2 times 2 is 4 plus 9y is 7. I'm going to subtract the 4 there. I'm going to do it here too. So 9y is 7 minus 4 9y is 3. I want to get rid of the 9. I cancel, I divide by 9 so that I can cancel. What I do on this side, I do on this side. So y is equal to, and lowest terms, 3 terms. I use my highest common factor. I divide both by 3, so it is 1 third. When you have a fraction and you have to give the lowest terms, the easiest method is to use your calculator. If you enter like 3 ninths now, I enter 3, ABC 9, and the calculator gives me 1 over 3. So this is just to make cancelling easier. Changing the subject of the formula. Changing the subject of a formula. Um, it's copied from the original presentation. So it's make P the subject of the formula is 2R plus, plus P equals Q. Make Y the subject of the formula. P is 2MY. Now she give a few examples. Okay, I'm going to do, okay, let's do all four of them. 
S is equal to T plus A. S is equal to T plus A. And T should be my subject. Subject of the formula is to get the T on its own. So I will have to say T equals that. So the T should be uh, on the left hand side. I'm going to just to make it easier for me, I'm just going to change it and to write it's exactly the same value so I do not change the value. I will say T plus A is S. So the T is on that side. Can you see to remove the A there, I have to subtract an A. What I do on this side, I do on that side. So T is S minus A. Now T is the subject of the formula and this is the answer. The next one PV is equal to T and V should be the subject of the formula. So I have to say V equals this. So V is on this left hand side again. Uh, v is on both sides. Uh, no, 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 sorry. The V should be the subject of the formula. It's not on both sides. I'm sorry. So this is multiplication. There's an invisible multiplication sign between the P and the V. So opposite calculation of multiplication is division. I want to have V on its own, so I'm going to divide by P so that I can cancel P and V is on its own. What I do on this side, I do on this side. So my answer is V equals T P. And that's the answer. Now V is the subject of the formula. Can you see how easy it is? Um, the next one V2 is equal to 4GH and H should be the subject of the formula. So H is on this side, V2 is on that side. I'm just going to exchange thing, write thing like I want it. I want to have 4GH is equal to V2. But you should realize you don't need to do this. It's just easier for me as a person to have it on the left side from the beginning. Uh, v should be the subject. So I'm going to divide by 4G so that I can cancel. And I do the same on this side, 4G. So my answer is H is V2 over 4 and the last one A is equal to that means divided Q, uh, is, sorry uh, A is equal to P divided by Q and Q should uh, Q should be the subject of the formula uh, there are different methods to do this one I'm only going to explain one method. Uh, for me, the easiest is to multiply by, by Q. So I will say A is P Q times Q so that I can get rid of the Q as a denominator. So if I multiply with Q on this side, I have to multiply with the Q on that side too. So this one changes to a q q is equal to p. I want to get rid of the a to have q on its own. Divide by a, divide by a. So q is equal to. So it's not neatly written, but a q is equal to p over a. Sorry, so that's an A. So Q is equal to P divided by A. That is changing the subject of the formula.
The next one, ratio. I try to simplify, not really simplify, but the ratio. The are only four different types of questions that they can ask you about the ratio. Namely, they can ask you to simplify, but you should always simplify the ratio that you, that you get. The next one is division in a given ratio. The next one is increase or decrease in a given ratio. And the last one, you are given one ratio, the given the ratio, and one outcome. But we will start with the first one, simplifying of ratios. Uh, uh, when you have ratio, the units should always be the same. It should be similar. If you work with hours to minutes, you normally change the hours to minutes. If you work with meters and centimeters, you normally change the meters to centimeters, so that's centimeters, centimeters. Or days to weeks, you change the weeks to days. So you should know how many days in a week, hours in a, a minute in an hour, hours in a day, etc. But let's look at the example. As I said, units should be similar. For example, two meters to five centimeters. You change the meters to centimeters. There's 100 centimeters in a meter. So in two meters, it's 200 centimeters. So it, the two meters changes to 200, and the five stays five. At the moment, they are the same unit. You don't write the centimeters anymore. You don't write the units anymore. And to simplify it, divide by... The, the highest common factor it will be 5. 5 divided by 5 is 1. 200 divided by 5 is 40. And it should always be lowest terms, just like fractions. That's, uh, the answer should always be in lowest terms. Except for that the units should be similar, it should always be whole numbers. So when you get, for example, 1,2, 2, 3, 1, 2 divide, uh, times, times 10 gives me 12. What you do with that one, you also do with this one. So times 10 there changes to 12. 3 times 10 changes to 30. So it will be 12 to 30. Divide by the highest common factor, which is 6. So it is 12 divided by 6 gives me 2. 30 divided by 6 gives me 5. The next type uh, division in a given ratio div uh, um, like divide 85 in the ratio of 2 to 3. Now always when you are asked to share or divide you should know you have to add the uh, the ratio. So in this case you say that 2 and 3, 2 plus 3 gives me 5. So the first one is 2 fifths of the $85 gives you 34 and the other one 3 fifths, 3 over 5 of the $85 gives you $51. The third type, increase or decrease in a given ratio. Up to now, I haven't seen, even in grade 10 and grade 12 question papers, I haven't seen that they ask you to increase or decrease. And I think it's because it's so easy. Um, if you ever ask you to increase or decrease in a given ratio, uh, to increase means it becomes more. If the ratio is, for example, 4 to 5, you say 5, the biggest value, over the 4 times 20, and it gives you 25. If they ask you for to decrease in a given ratio, the smallest number at the top, 4 over 5 of 20, is 16. And the fourth type that I can ask you, with regards to ratio, 
they give you the given ratio and one outcome. For example, oranges, apples and oranges in a fruit bowl are divided in the ratio of 3 to 7. There are 30 apples. How many oranges are there? Now, in the first place, it's important to realize that they say apples and oranges. So the apples will be the first ratio and the oranges the second one. So, 3 to 7, the 3 is apples and the 7 is oranges. And they say there are 30 apples. Now, what have they done with the 3 to get 30? They multiplied by 10. If you multiply the 3 by 10, you also multiply the 7 by 10. And the answer is 70. That was with regards to ratio. Measuration. Measuration is about area, surface area, perimeter and volume. For measuration, you have to memorize your formula. But I try to make the formula as easy as possible. If you can see, uh, okay, the shape on the uh, left-hand side, a square, rectangle, triangle, parallelogram, trapezium, and circle. Perimeter, perimeter is only length, is the distance around a shape. So the perimeter of this rectangle will be this, plus this, plus this, plus this. Perimeter of a square, plus, plus, plus. So, for perimeter, you do not really need to learn your formula because if you only add, you will get the answer. Except for the circle, for the circle, you should realize it's 2 times radius, 2 radius times pi, or diameter times pi. And the perimeter of a circle is called the circumference of a circle. Area, if you learn your area formula, you already actually know your volume formula. For area, let's look at the square. Area is side times side. Gives you side square. Area of a rectangle is length times width. Sometimes they use breadth B. But because the B is also used for base, I prefer to use the W. So rectangle, the area is length times width. The area of a triangle is half times base times height. And this is the perpendicular height. Perpendicular height meaning it, the, it meets at 90 degrees at the bottom. Parallelogram is base times height. Trapezium is, the area is half times A plus B. We will have a look at the trapezium times height. And the area of a circle is pi radius square. Volume. I only did a, square, a volume of a cube. If it's a square, it forms a cube. So it's side times side times side. And a rectangle. If you are asked to calculate the volume of a rectangular prism or a cuboid, it's length times width times height. So you can see it's the area times another length. Cylinder, pi radius square, the area again, times another length. It can be times length or times height. It depends on the shape that they give you. Let's do a fill of them. Uh, if it's a rectangle, um, say for instance the length is 10 centimeters. It is 10 centimeters and the width is 6 centimeters. You always write your formula. Area is length times width or you can use breadth. It doesn't matter. So it is 10 times 6, which gives you 60 square units, centimeters square. Area is two-dimensional, two square, uh, 
square units. A square, remember, a square has four equal sides. If the side of the square is, say, for instance, three centimeters, it means all four of them is three centimeters. The area formula is side times side, which is three times three, and it gives you nine square centimeters. A triangle. The area formula of a triangle is area is half times base times height. Now if I give you a triangle like this, sorry it's not neatly done, but this is a triangle. Uh, somewhere there will be an indication like this. So if I if the base is six meters and this side is four centimeters they will give you that length too and maybe this one say for instance 10 centimeters the formula is half times base times height so it is half times the base in this case six centimeters times the height and the perpendicular height, you use this one times 3. So 6 times 3 is 18, half of that is 9 square meters, um, centimeters. Trapezium. A trapezium has only one property. And the property of a trapezium is one pair of opposite sides are parallel. So that is indicated by the A and the B. If this side is, say, for instance, 4 meters, and that side is 8 meters, they will somewhere give you an indication of the perpendicular height. And say this is 5 meters. You use your formula. Area is half a plus B times height is half. 8 plus 4 times the perpendicular height, 5. So 8 plus 4 is 12. Half times 12 times 5. And if you do it on the calculator, you will get 30 square meters. A circle. I promise you this is round, 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 round. This is called the center of the circle. Important to note which one is the, uh, the radius. The radius is from the center to the circumference. The diameter will go from the circumference through the center to the other side. So this one is called the radius and this one is called the diameter. Um, if you have to calculate the area of the circle, say for instance the radius is 5 centimeters, you say uh, area of a circle is pi radius squared you use the pi on your calculator times 5 square and you get the answer. So many square centimeters. The next type, let's go to geometry. It's on page 11 of the presentation. Um, the presentation, page 11. You go to page 11 of the presentation. I will draw it for you. It's looking more or less like, like this. It's two parallel lines. Parallel lines are indicated by arrows on the lines. And this one, also with an arrow and an arrow. So 
it means this one is parallel to that one and that one is parallel to that one now when it's always it's the easiest to remember there are only three uh, not properties but uh, four rules to know the F stands for corresponding angles now corresponding angles if I look for an F in this one can you see there's an F here F or there's an F here uh, and if looking like looking to the other side now corresponding angles are like it's underneath that one underneath that one so that one say for instance this one is 60 degrees this one will also be 60 degrees and those those are called corresponding angles so the F stands for corresponding angles the U I can see a U here, that's a U, that one is a U, that one is a U, this one is a U. The U tells you that co-interior angles add up to 180 degrees. So it means if this one is 60, 180 minus 60 gives me 120 degrees. So that one plus this one gives me 180 degrees it's co-interior angles the N uh, now I have to this not a nice N but this one is an N and this one is an N and N is alternate angles so if this is an N, it means that that angle will be the same as that angle. So if, if this angle, if that one is 60, remember it's a U, that one will be 120. So this one will also be 120 degrees. But you should know the rules, corresponding angles, co-interior angles, and alternate angles. Uh, for the F, that angle is the same as that one for the U that angle plus that one add up to 180 and the N that angle is similar to that angle that is with regards to geometry in the presentation now the Cartesian plane when I taught uh, the students uh, during the weekend I saw that lots of them have a problem to plot points on the Cartesian plane and it actually is so so very easy and I'm going to show you the example on the PowerPoint uh, does not have the names uh, uh, like A is negative 4 and 10 now in the first place the Cartesian plane you should always always you give your answer should be in brackets say for instance uh, I have to plot A A is the name it is negative 4 and 10 remember that it should always it is like there it's given in brackets it says negative 4 and 10 and the name is A now I have to plot A the first one is always the x value, the horizontal one. And the next one is always the y value, the vertical one. So I first go to my x axis and look where is negative 4. Negative 4 is there. And 10. Easiest to use a ruler. So negative 4 x is negative 4 and y is 10 so y is 10 there and I plot my point so when you are you are often asked to give the coordinates of a b c or whatever so 
for A, if you are asked to plot the coordinates, or not plot to write the coordinates, you will say A, and then you go down, it's negative 4, and you go to Y, it is 10. Let's do B. B is 7 at negative 9. First X, 7 at negative 9. So if I take my ruler, 7, and I go down, negative 9 is there, 7 is there, so it will be there. That is B. So first the x-axis, then the y-axis. And this is important to know because also a straight line graph use the Cartesian plane. The x, remember, it's on the right-hand side, it's positive. On the left-hand side, it's negative. Y-axis, and the top side, it's positive. At the bottom, it is negative. Graphs. Um, normally, graphs are not so difficult. But you should know that we get different types of graphs. Now, the name for this one, the graph looking like this, is called the histogram. This one, histogram. A histogram has all its it's it's like a hand. It's it's like fingers. And a bar graph has spaces in between. And you can look through the bars. So spaces in between it will be more or less something like this. But remember the name is it's and Equal, it, the width of the bars are exactly the same as well as the spaces between the bars should be exactly the same. And the third type is a pie graph or a pie chart. Is, it is the round graph. So it is a pie graph. Then very important the straight line graph. Um, you are often expected to do a straight line graph. Now we are going to do it step by step. In the first place, this is also from the presentation, uh, plot points on the Cartesian plane coordinate system, construct tables of values for the function y is mx plus c, Draw and interpret graphs of the function y is mx plus c. Note that all straight line graphs are written in the form using the general equation y is mx plus, plus c. Uh, she says that you should check out for practical examples in the study guide. Uh, now the table that was given to you in the presentation gives you the information of y is x plus 2. Now you have to find the value of y when x is negative 2, when x is 1, when x is 2, and when x is 3. And you have to find those values. You are going to use the equation every time. Every time you are going to use y is x plus 2. We are first going to try and find the value of y for that one. Now you write y is, and uh, she also asks you, you will always be asked to show your calculations. So every time you write y is x plus 2. Now the value of x in this case is negative 2. So you substitute your x by negative 2 plus 2. Now what is the value of negative 2 plus 2? It is 0. And you write in the 0. So negative 1, the value is 1. For 0, x, y is 2. What is the value of y when x is 1? 
you again use the same equation y is x plus 2 you substitute your x by the value given so 1 plus 2 what is 1 plus 2? it gives you 3 and you write in the 3 next one I have to find the value when x is 2 what is the value of y? I again use the same formula I insert the value of x in that case it is 2 plus 2 and 2 plus 2 gives me 4 4 and the last one you will substitute the x value by 3 and so it will be 3 plus 2 and the value will be 5 but now after you've done this, just check your information. Can you see that x is negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3? y is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now say for instance you have a 6 there. You can see that 0, 1, 2, 6, 4, 5 doesn't work. Then you recalculate that one. And now you will be expected to plot to plot those points. X is negative two, y is zero. X is negative two, y is zero. So it will be there. Next one, x is negative one, y is one. X negative one, y is one. There. x is 0, y is 2. Now it x is 0, y is 2. x is 1, y is 3. x is 1, y is 3. x is 2, y is 4. x2, y4. x is 3, y is 5. x is 3, y is 5. And it's the second one. Draw the graph of y is x plus 2. Plot the coordinates that you have filled in the table above. And now you draw your graph. And if this is not a straight line, go back to your table and check where you made your mistake. It should be a straight line. The name is straight line graph. And you can write, if you are smart, y is x plus 2. Okay, we did the Cartesian plane. Now trigonometry. Bearings. This one has nothing to do with cars and engines. It's trigonometry bearings. Um, with regards to bearings, only three things to remember. Always start from north, clockwise, your answer with three digits. Let's read it. A bearing is a measure of direction with north taken as reference. The bearing measured in degrees, clockwise direction from north, and the bearings are always written with three figures. We are going to do a fill. Um, they will always give you two points. Like say for example, town A and town B. And then, if we use the ruler, it will be a straight line. And they will give you an indication of the uh, degrees, of the size of the angle. In the first place, you should remember that these are all right angles, meaning they are all 90 degree angles. So this one is equal to 90 degrees. So if they give you, uh, say for instance, that one, 40 degrees. Now, remember 
The bearing starts always from north. This is north. So you take your pencil and you say, okay, I have to travel from there, it's clockwise up to there. And my answer should have three digits. Now if this one is 30, this one is 90, this one is 30, 90 minus 30 will give you 60 degrees. So the bearing of B from A in this case is 0, 6, 0 degrees. Three digits. If you don't add that 0, your answer will be wrong. The next one. Let's put it in this this quadrant, in the second quadrant. Okay, it's like town C and town D. What is the bearing of D from C? That can tell you, okay, this one is uh, 40 degrees. Now, you take your pencil, always take your pencil, start from north. So you travel clockwise, so it's 90 degrees plus 40 degrees. So 90 plus 40 will give you 130 degrees. Three digits, so my answer will be correct. Let's do next one in the third quadrant. Let's make it town E and town F. And they tell you, okay, this one is 20 degrees. Take your pencil, you are going to travel, start at north, clockwise, 90, plus 90, plus this one. Now what is the value of this one? This one is 90, so if I, 90 minus 20 gives me 70. So it is 90 plus 90, 180, plus 70, is it 250? I hope so. It's a zero there. Three digits. <coughs> Let's do another one. Um, e and F. Let's make it down G and down H. And they tell you that this one is 10 degrees. It's definitely not to scale, so it's not the correct values if you measure it with your uh, instruments. You start from north, 90 degrees, 90 degrees, 90 degrees, it gives you 270 plus this one. If this one is 10, 90 minus 10 will give you 80. So 270 plus 80 is it 350, it's 350 degrees. Easy marks. If you use your pencil, if you travel from north clockwise and do your calculations correctly. <coughs> that was bearings. Next one, Pythagoras. The Pythagoras theorem is in the grade 9 syllabus. Grade 9 learners start with the Pythagoras theorem. And from grade 9 onwards, there will always be a question with regards to the Pythagoras theorem. So you will always expect a question with regards to this. Uh, <coughs> uh, I'm going, it's an, an excellent explanation on the presentation. I am going to explain to you by you doing my own one. Say for, in, uh, <coughs> say for instance you get a triangle and remember Pythagoras theorem is also always only using 90 degree angles so, so it will be a right angled triangle. It will be a 90 degree triangle. I'm going to use the easy ones 3, 4 and 5 is the easiest to explain this theorem with. Pythagoras, he lived more or less 
200, 300, 500 before Christ. And he developed this theorem. And he uh, discovered that, say for instance, BC is 4 and AB is 3. If you have the value of AB and of BC, it will be possible for you to find the value of AC. And the same, if you have the value of AB and AC, it's possible for you to find the value of BC. And I can go on with that. So, he says, a, C, A, C. I'm going to look at this one now. First one. A, C square is equal to A, B square plus B, C square. And there's a reason why this plus sign is so large, why I uh, do this. So, he discovered then if I take the square of 3, and square of 3, what is the square of 3? 3 times 3 gives me, you know your square numbers, is 9. If you take the square of 3, 3 square, plus the square of 4, what is the square of 4? 16. If I add 9 and 16, I will have a value of 25. How do I get 5 from 25? I take the square root of 25 and then I will get 5. So BC is in this case 4 square, so it is 9 plus 16 gives me 25. So AC now is the opposite calculation of a square is the square root of 25 and it will give you 5. So then you have that value. So when you are asked for the long side, you take short side square plus short side square, you add the two and you get the square root of that sum to get the value of that one. When you are asked, uh, no, I'm going to use the same way. When you are asked, say for instance, for the value of BC, it's a short side. So BC, which is a short side, will be the long side square AC square minus the other short side AB square. So it will be 5 square minus AB. 3 square is 25 minus 9 is 16. BC is the square root of 16 which gives you so when you are asked for the long side, you take the short side plus short side squares, square root. If you are asked for a short side, you take the long side square minus short side square. Uh, the long side is always the side opposite the right angle. Now the last topic, trigonometric ratios. We use trigonometric ratios to solve right angle triangles, triangles with one angle 90 degrees. Uh, up to grade 10, learners only work up to work with right angle triangles with, when they work with trigonometry. The three trigonometric ratios are sine, co cosine, and tangent. If you look on your calculator, you will see sin, cos, and tan. We label the sides in relation to the angle that we consider. 
The side opposite to the right angle, the longer side of the triangle, is always called the hypotenuse. Okay, I'm going to explain by using my own sketches. I know they are not very neat, but I, I will do my best. So I have a right angle triangle. The side opposite the right angle is always called the hypotenuse. Now it depends on where you stand, we, uh, we, uh, we, from where you are looking. Uh, we always use the hypotenuse, the, the three sides, hypotenuse. The opposite and the adjacent side. Those are the three that we use. Hypotenuse. So when you are looking from here, if you are there, standing there, looking from there, that one will be the opposite. And this one will be the one connected to where you are, will be the adjacent side. When you are looking from here, it's your arms, and you are there. Looking from there, that one will be the opposite. And this one will be the adjacent. Now, to make it easier to remember, I always teach, and lots of people do that, uh, the learners to learn this. So, and it's important to note the spelling, so, Ka Twa. And I saw that they often ask you for the ratio. So the, this is of so stands for sign. The C of uh, Ka stands for cosine. The T of Twa stands for tangent. So now it's easy to remember that Sin is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite hypotenuse. But in the examination, please do not give an O over an H. You should write opposite over hypotenuse. Course will be adjacent over hypotenuse. And tangent, tan will be opposite over adjacent. So, if you know the spelling of so, ka, twa, it's easy to remember that sin is opposite divided by hypotenuse, cos is adjacent divided by hypotenuse, tan is opposite divided by adjacent. And that's it. Thank you.